We've all been bowling before. A bowling alley is a great place to catch up with friends and have some fun. However, it wasn't until Kirsten and I joined the MHMS bowling team that we realized how serious of a sport bowling actually is. I honestly thought it would just be an easy way to fill my sports requirement, but I soon discovered that it took serious muscle, form, and aim in order to become a successful bowler. Kendall and I wondered if anyone else thought the way we had, so we asked the public their opinion about bowling. What are your opinions about bowling? Uh, well I always thought it was something fun to do with friends, and I've seen it done competitively, I just never thought it was really serious. I mean, I only wee bowl, but I did bowl a 300 once, it was pretty easy, so I guess that counts for bowling. So, I'm sure it's a respectable sport, it's just, it's not for me. In addition to interviewing people, we went online to see what the internet had to say about bowling. Unfortunately, most of what we found degraded bowling down to simply a beer sport. It's like, well, we could go bowling, or we could just hang ourselves. If you're out of shape and you're bowling, you're probably a professional bowler. Some people have their own bowling ball and their own bowling shoes and no friends. It was obvious that bowling did not have a serious rep among the general population. So we questioned ourselves, how long has bowling been around? Has it ever been given the proper respect it deserves? Was that respect for the same sport we know today? Here are some answers according to the Bowling Museum, New York Times, and Bowling Incorporated. There have been historic discoveries of a bowling-like sport dating as far back as 3200 BC, and some sources even claim that a similar activity is featured in Egyptian hieroglyphics and graves from 5000 BC. However, historian William Peel reported that bowling began in Germany in 300 AD. By 1366, bowling had spread to other countries and was so popular in England that King Edward III reportedly had to outlaw it so that his troops would focus on their archery practice. As the sport spread from country to country, different forms of bowling developed across Europe. When German, Dutch, and English immigrants arrived in America, they brought bowling with them. The different types ended up mixing together and developing into the form we love today. However, the sport only involved nine pins until the tenth pin was added in the early 1900s. As the sport developed, competition became so intense that bowling became a popular subject of gambling. Bowling alleys were even outlawed for a short amount of time in some states in order to prevent betting. However, these laws were to no avail. If anything, bowling became even more popular due to its illegality. The wealthy built lanes in their mansions, and a black market gambling ring was born. Rather than fight the sport, America decided to embrace bowling and began standardizing competitions through the creation of the American Bowling Congress in 1895 and Women's Bowling Congress in 1917. In 1914, companies like Brunswick, Evertrue, and Storm began producing new innovations to the sport, such as customized rubber bowling balls, non-slip shoes, and automatic pin spotters that revolutionized bowling forever. Popularity skyrocketed, and bowling became the new favorite pastime of the world. In the 1950s, NBC embraced bowling by being the first ever network to broadcast the sport with the show Championship Bowling. Following the show's huge success, more networks featured bowling shows like Celebrity Bowling, Bowling for Dollars, and Make That Spare. And in 1961, ABC became the first network to telecast competition of the Pro Bowlers Association, and the Pro Bowlers Tour became a staple of the company's sport broadcasting. Thousand to the winner. Jim is out there. Good ball. Has 25 points. Well, here is a left-handed bowler. The controversy has been, does the left-handed bowler have a disadvantage or an advantage in being on Make That Spare? Well, let's find out. Jerry's one of the fine bowlers on the tour. Gets over a little bit too far, but carried it. Oh, yeah. He had a nice... It became clear that bowling has a long and rich history, but Kirsten and I wondered about the nature of the sport today. We have had some first-hand experience of competitive bowling, but we wanted to know what exactly went into a successful bowl. Here's some advice from our very own coach. What kind of strategy advice is a bowling coach giving? You know what this time, Timmy? I want you to knock down all the pins. Welcome to Bowling 101. Today we're going to learn simple facts to make your bowling game a lot better. All right, lesson one. 
what you'll need. There are three things that you'll need. Proper shoes, a bowling ball, and a great attitude. Lesson two is showing the proper footwork while bowling. You'll start with your knees bent. It's a four step process and you'll start with your dominant leg. So it's just one, two, three, and on that fourth step, you slide your leg behind the other to open the hip to allow the ball to go forward. Lesson three, ball movement along with the steps that we went over in lesson two. So as in lesson two, our knees will be bent, the ball will place the kind to our side, and with every step that you take, the ball moves further back. With that last and final fourth step, the ball comes forward. And that's when the ball is released. In our last lesson, Kirsten's going to demonstrate everything that we've talked about and pull it all together. Kirsten, take it over. All right. Perfect. <laughs> and that's how you do it. What? All right. Thanks, kids, for joining us this week. Next week, we'll be going over uh, how to curve a ball and the proper foods that you should order while bowling. See you next week. Now, Coach Duke kept it short and sweet, but a short internet search proved that bowling isn't as easy as it looks. Stop holy mate. Even professional bowlers can't get it down to a science. Yeah, once he hit the lane, he had no chance. No. It's like hitting one. It's first in the time for this. <laughs> wow, I had a lot of fun bowling. I never knew it was so complex and competitive. Okay, dang, uh, I really didn't know you had to do all that because in wee bowling, you can just sit down and be like, strike every time. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I didn't know the origin of bowling went that far back. I thought it was just something some bored Americans came up with. So yes, bowling is a fun Friday night activity, but it turns out that it is much more than that. Kirsten and I have experienced firsthand the ridicule of being serious bowlers, but we find the excitement of picking up a 710 spare exceeds the amount of jokes we hear. And hey, how can you have fun without making a little fun of yourself? Ultimately, bowling is a real sport. Despite being a fun activity for a night out with friends, bowling has a rich competitive history and is a wildly popular sport among nearly 100 countries throughout the world. So, if you find yourself up against a competitive bowler, know that you will not be spared. Don't think because there's a ring on your finger, you need to try anymore.